Okay, chapter 37. Name the Nines, the Ram Bang. He's not always cracked up to be people, and he made up a lot of things. Messianic air, world exaltation of the Jews. Uh, King Moshiach, he's got two chapters on the laws of King Moshiach in uh, his mission of Torah. And you can't find one word of it in the Hebrew Bible. That's just what he thought it would be like. But it's taught today by rabbis as though Messianic age exaltation, world exaltation. You have to understand that would mean two billion Christians disavowing Jesus, two billion Muslims disavowing Allah, and coming to exalt the Jewish people, saying y'all have been right about God all along. It's never going to happen. I mean, all you got to do is think about it. But. He was a great man, smarter than just about anybody else his, you know, in his era. Moses Maimonides. Moses Ben Maimon, known in rabbinical literature, literature as Rambam. From the acronym Rabbi Moses Ben Maimon. Uh, that would have been from 1135 to 1204. Rabbinic authority, codifier, philosopher, and royal physician. The most illustrious figure in Judaism in the post-Talmudic era. Regarded by many as the greatest Jewish philosopher of the Middle Ages. And one of the greatest of all time. He was successful in bringing four cultures, Greco-Roman, Arab, Jewish, and Western, together in one person, and in doing so, remains one of the most influential religious philosophers of the intellectual world. Well, you've already got my opinion on that. His teaching influences other faith as well as Jews. However, it is his commentary on Jewish texts that mark him as one of the most influential and important Jews in history. He wrote three major essays on Jewish law, the most famous being The Guide for the Perplexed. And each of them is still regarded as hugely important in Jewish philosophy. This monumental work laid the foundation for all subsequent Jewish philosophic inquiry, known as Shakira, and stimulated centuries of philosophic Jewish writing. His large 14-volume work, Mishnah Torah, that I just mentioned, to date holds canonical authority in regard of a codification of Talmudic law. Okay, this all came from the Jewish virtual library, this whole paragraph, the famous people and the BBC. Rambam also says in chapter 12, paragraph 2, of the laws concerning King Moshe, our sages taught, this is from Barakas 34b, there will be no difference between the current age and the era of Moshe, except our emancipation from subjugation to the Gentile kingdoms. The simple meaning of the words of the prophets appears to imply that the war of Gog and Magog will take place at the beginning of the Messianic age. None of this is going to occur. Okay, no war, Agog, Gog, no Messianic age. It's not going to occur. And I know this because that's what God had me right now. Type. And that's what he told me. That's what he told me. Before the war of Gog and Magog, a prophet will arise to rectify Israel's conduct and prepare their hearts for the redemption. As it is written, this is Malachi 3, verse 23. Behold, I am sending you Eliahu. That's, that's Elijah. Before the advent of the great and awesome day of God. That's here today. 
I've got plenty of prior videos that, that show why that is. He will not come in order to deliver the pure, impure, nor to declare the impure, pure, nor will he come in order to disqualify the lineage of those presumed to be of flawless descent, nor to validate lineage which is presumed to be blemished. Rather, he will come in order to establish peace in the world. As the above prophecy continues, Malachi 3, verse 24, he will bring back the hearts of the fathers to the children. He's not coming to establish peace in the world. That can't be done. Not in God's creation, it can't be done. Never happened. Elijah does not come to establish peace in the world, but to make the many righteous, just like the righteous servant. And again, four righteous servants to come. Elijah, prophet like Moses, Moshiach, and the one man we have a description of, a righteous servant, and that would be me. I embody all four. And God's given me the knowledge to do just that, including I've done the, the one thing Moses did that sets him apart from all other prophets. God dictated the book to him that we know of. But as I'm telling you, he actually did it with all of your prophets, Jewish people which makes every one of them a man in divine beings. And I've explained that already. Just like the man who wrestled with Jacob and God spoke and said, Jacob, I changed your name to Israel. I know how that works too. He can speak through a man. Ram Bam and the Sages say in chapter 12, Paragraph 3 of the laws concerning King Moshiach. During the era of King Moshiach, again, not in the Hebrew Bible, God never said this. Once his kingdom has been established and all of Israel has gathered around him, the entire nation's line of descent will be established on the basis of his words. You, you can't, Jews are too intermingled. There's no pure line anymore. This is all something that sounded good in antiquity in the middle, age, early Middle Ages. Today, we know that this just can't happen. You know, even Ezekiel, he had all all the Jewish people returning the tribes, which was correct. They did. Nobody got lost. But he has them separated out and go back to the lots they were originally assigned by Joshua and Moses. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Israel's a nation now, a democratic nation. The line of descent will be established on the basis of his words through the prophetic spirit, spirit which will rest upon him. We don't believe in prophetic spirits anymore. Again, you have to separate the writings with the knowledge that in antiquity, people were illiterate. And it was a different era and a different time. And the Bible is written like that. You can find it all over. And I've given great examples of it already in prior videos. As it is written, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier. He will purify the lineage of the Levites first, stating that. This one is a priest of divine lineage, and this one is a Levite of divine lineage. <laughs> the refiner and purifier of anybody is God himself. Ramban's basis for this belief is a verse in the book of Ezra, which is chapter 2, verse 63, that begins, The governor said to them, They shall not eat of the most holy things until a priest arises who will wear the urine and tenum. That was part of their, their dress. From this verse, one can infer 
and this would be Randy I'm talking, that the genealogy of those presumed to be of unquestioned priestly and Levitical lineage will be traced by means of the prophets, uh, the prophetic spirit. And those found to be of such lineage will be made known. He will define the lineage of the Israelites according to their tribe alone. It cannot happen to the the tribes have become too intermingled, you know, and, and that's not even taking into account interfaith marriages or marriages by Jewish people with Gentiles. That's not even taking that into account. This cannot happen. And people need to realize that, and God wants you to realize the Jewish people. That's why he set up one more day. And that day began in 1948 when the state of Israel was created. And the desolate land bloomed again. The ruined cities restored and Jerusalem rebuilt. Read Jeremiah 31. That means he's ready to make a new covenant with you. And the only place you can find that covenant, Malachi 3, where he announces the day of the Lord. He says, the angel of the covenant you desire is already on the way. His purpose that might prosper by Isaiah 53 is given to us. In Malachi 3. I'm returning to my temple. And my messenger shall clear the way for me. Well that's what this is the beginning of. Build it. Never defeat and disperse again. According to the other covenant. Covenant of friendship. That is basically given to David. Again. Elijah and David. I have both of them. And they're both in this book. And when it's. They're published, which I'm having a hard time getting done because the books kind of look like an attack on Judaism. But to the knowledgeable, they're not. This is just God saying, we got to get some things straight in here. I knew it was going to be like this. So, he will make known each person's tribal origin, stating that this is one is from this tribe. And this one is from another tribe. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier. From the first paragraph of chapter 12, paragraph 3, is not Moshiach. God purifies and refines. And he comes with Elijah and the angel of the covenant that you desire. Sin forgiveness. To make you a holy seed, just like Jewish people, just like he did the exiles. All 13 tribes return. He forgave all their sins, and what they did? They became a holy seed and built the second temple. Well, you're about to be a holy seed again, Jewish people. You're going to have to recognize me and understand how God was with Moses. He is with me also. And he will place his temple amongst you. He knows in the covenant of friendship, it's not here right now. He has to get me ready first. Because your rabbis don't teach this. If you don't build that temple, if he can't get to it to return to, that's the purpose that might prosper. He doesn't tell us in 53. His last words are, I will bring utter destruction to the land of Israel. What he means is his creation will bring utter destruction. Build a temple, never defeat it again. Don't build it utter destruction to the land. You got 7 million Israeli Jews right now. They could take out 6 million again. You know, think Iran and nuclear bombs, Lebanon, Lebanon sending off 2,000 rockets, Egypt getting involved, Jordan getting involved. Israel's got the finest army in the Middle East. But if they get jumped on by three, four, or five people at the same time, they'll never withstand it. The shield of David, that uh, those missiles that shoot down rockets, could never stop that. It's too much. No prophetic spirit. While prophetic spirits were a common belief in the ancient age and middle ages, this is not true for the ages of reasoning and information, medicine and science. Isaiah
Okay, but who can endure the day of his coming? And who can hold out when he appears? For he is like a smelter's fire and like fuller's lie. This is Malachi 2 through 5. He shall act like a smelter and purger of silver, and he shall purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, silver so that they shall present offerings and righteousness. That's sin forgiveness from God, people. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem shall be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of yore and in the years of old. But first, I will step forward to contend against you. That's what he's doing with this book. And the I is God. It's not Elijah. Again, Rambam misinterpretations, making up things. Yeah, great philosophical writer. Everything else you heard me read. And I don't deny in his day that's true, but you're talking about the year 1000 and so. That's well over 1200 years ago. And there were basically no schools that anybody knows of. I don't know how he got all his knowledge. The elite could get knowledge. If you were rich, his family must have been. And I will be a relentless accuser against those who have no fear of me. Now that would be people like Toby a Singer and Kravitz and Skoback from Jews for Judaism. They don't fear it. They know Israel could not possibly fit Isaiah 53. I don't care what you make up to go with it. And certainly Toby a Singer did. He's got... You know, you can say, well, Toby would know. If he says it's Israel, it's Israel. Yeah, go read his commentary to back that up and just do this with your head. Just shake your head and go, that's ridiculous. I can't even figure out what he's trying to say here. And Jews for Judaism, Kravitz and Skoback, is all based on worldwide exaltation, which, again, comes through this belief in the Messianic era and Rambam. It's not in the Bible. And they teach it like it is. It infuriates God. Those are the people who do not hate him. They will not go into the scroll of remembrance of Malachi 3, which means they will not see the Jewish heaven. Not unless they help God and me get this, get Judaism on the right path. And that means teach this book. Read it. Go to your flock. Tell them we've made a lot of mistakes. Here's the things we want to straighten out. That's what I'm saying to Toby, you're saying you're in Jews for Judaism. That's what God's having me say. He has absolute total control of me. My very thoughts, my words, and his power engulfs me as it did Ezekiel, according to his power. A relentless accuser. That's what he's doing right now. You get this thing straight, rabbis, or you don't go into the scroll in the day of the Lord, and it's a special heaven. Just for those who make it to the scroll in the day of the Lord. Which will go from 1948 until at least until I die. This is God and not David or Elijah. In Hebrew writing, it is common to express the same idea twice using two different phrasings or metaphrases. The phrase, for he is like a smelter's fire and like fuller's lie is a good example. Fuller's lie, which is soap, should be understood along the lines of smelter's fire. Someone would bring a lump of gold or silver, and the smelter would use fire to burn off the dross and purify the precious metal. Similarly, people would bring their wool to the fuller, and he would use soap to clean the wool and renew the impurities so that what is left is pure wool. In Malachi 1 and 2, the priesthood has been defiled. They are polluted offerings. They offer polluted offerings. On a side note, there's not going to be any offerings. The animal sacrificial system was done away with by God, and he is not bringing it back. It was a teaching tool for an illiterate ancient time. That and cook your food. Because they didn't. So they were illiterate and savage. 
which was still going on in the days of Solomon, by the way. They disregard. They have turned from God and refused to listen to him. And they profane God's covenant. They disregard God's ways. And he says, those who have no fear of me will be the priestly tribe of the Levites and not pertaining to genealogy or tribal lineage, but to Ezekiel 34. That's the, that's where, that's the, um, that's where he says 34.10. Thus said the Lord God, I'm going to deal with the shepherds. That's your rabbis, Jewish people. I will demand a reckoning of them for my flock, my people. My chosen, my children, and I will dismiss them from tending the flock. Now that was a good thing to say in antiquity. You can't, you can't go to synagogue and tend your flock. People could believe that back then. There was just too few people, too few synagogues. Today we know that's not possible. And God tells me the new teaching to that is, and it's in writing that He gave me. You're dismissed before the eyes of God, rabbis. And you're not going into the scroll. You will not see the Jewish heaven he is creating. Just for the Jewish people. Then I will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them. Shepherd as in teacher. I'm not a rabbi. My servant David. A shepherd. Nothing about a king right there. He shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. I, the Lord, will be their God. My servant David shall be a ruler among them, not over them. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will grant them a covenant of friendship. That's Ezekiel 34, verses 23 to 25. Malachi Chapter 3, verse 3 says, He shall purify the descendants, descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they shall present offerings in righteousness. This will be those rabbis who accept the words of the prophets of God as interpreted in this day of reasoning and information and not as interpreted in the ancient age and middle ages. The era of redemption, restoration, and exaltation versus the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, his covenant of friendship completely refutes a messianic era and world exaltation. His covenant says, look, I'm going to place my temple among you. The nations, the Gentiles will know I sanctify Israel and you will be safe on your soil and you will no longer be the taunts of nations. There's nothing about world exaltation. They're just going to have more respect for you when you build that temple, Israel. The, and this is in quotes, he, with a small h, in verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 3, of Malachi, should be, in quotes, capital H E, close quotes, God. The Rambam and the sages interpreted as a prophecy that Moshiach with a prophetic spirit would determine the lineage of the priests and Levites from the verse in the book of Ezra. The governor said to them, This is Ezra chapter 2, verse 63. They shall not eat of the most holy things until a priest arises who will wear the urim and tummim. This has nothing to do with genealogy of Levites today or purification or refining or a prophetic spirit on Moshiach. This is not a prophecy of a high priest arising and it is not Moshiach, but an answer to those who could not prove they were Levites when the verse is put into proper context. This is Ezra chapter 2, verse 61 through 63. Of the sons of the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Hakas, the sons of 
Brazilier, who had married a daughter of Barzillier and had taken his name. These searched for their genealogical records, but they could not be found. So they were disqualified for the priesthood. The Tushatha ordered them not to eat of the most holy things until a priest with urine and thumbing should appear. And that's what the whole basis of all that is. In the Hebrew Bible, we're almost done. I'm hoping my tape doesn't run out first. In the Hebrew Bible, the urim and thummim are elements of the breastplate. <laughs> I just lost my TV, didn't I? This is the backdrop God got from me with the check we got uh, when the COVID virus broke out to stimulate the economy. We bought this camera. I know it's not a very good one. It blurs out a lot. but And this backdrop for these videos that basically he's the producer of. He's the director and producer. Their uh, urim and thummim are elements of the breastplate worn by the high priest attached to the apoc. They are connected with divini divination in general and clerimancy in particular. A belief in antiquity and the Middle Ages rarely believed in today. You want me to read that? I know this tape's going to run there. I've been going more than a half hour. Oh, okay, I'm almost done. If this runs out, I'm not going to make a part two. We've got too many of those. Two objects used by the high priest to answer a question or reveal the will of God. The apod was made of fine linen and consisted of two pieces which hung from the neck and covered both the back and front, above the tunic and outer garment. Clemency, claromancy, is a form of sortition, casting of lots, in which an outcome is determined by means that normally would be considered random, such as the rolling of dice, but are sometimes believed to reveal the will of God. Ezra is not a book of the prophets. Trisantata was not a prophet and did not speak the words of God. Few people believe in divination and claromancy today. Matters and things of the Hebrew Bible written for an era gone by. Again, I got some great examples in other, other videos and in this book. I mean, everybody should read it. This is scripture. It's not canonized, but it's divinely received from God. Who, by the way, has been with me for 16 years preparing me for this. And his five refinement that Ezekiel went through. See, he leaves something out of Isaiah 53. And if you don't know what it is, you can't figure 53 out. But I got videos that show you I sure can. Because he, he, he taught it to me. He said, I left it out on purpose. I didn't want anybody to come even close. And Ezekiel is the key to 53. Because he goes through the fire refinement. And there's plenty of places you can find that true of Moses and a few places with David himself. Okay, chapter 38 coming up. The son of the 